Hi, I'm Aaron Sarofsky. And I'm Austin Shaw. This is Between the Keyframes. This week we're going to talk about passion projects. Why we need them. Why we do them. And how they can help you in your career path. Feeling a little bleak, feeling a little burned out. Maybe it's time to do a passion project. Might want to be more passionate about that, Austin. <laughs> passion project. Okay. What is a passion project? Well, you know, I like to break things down with words, you know, definitions. So I, I grabbed a couple dictionary definitions. One being an intense driving or overmastering feeling or conviction right. as, as a definition for passion. And, and I think that's a good one in relation to the idea of a passion project, right? And, and, and how that might be different than, say, a brief-driven project, a client-driven right. project. And not that, you know, not that there can't be passion in a client-driven project, but Often, if I'm making something that's it's a personal, it's an expression, I, I get that idea of that overmastering feeling or an intense driving feeling. It feels like I got to make this thing. It's like I right. got to get this out of me, right? Um, and that motivating emotion is is just different than say you know the professional motivation or the problem solving motivation that comes with a brief. Yeah, yeah, I think you know whenever I get a project from a client, I find a reason to be passionate about it. They're calling us in or me in to to make something for them. So for me, like a passion project is something that you make entirely for yourself for whatever reason. No, I would I would agree. And I think you came up with a great definition. Uh, you want you want to read it? Or you want me to read it? You read it. You're very academic. All right. All right. Thing. Yes, and I have I have it printed out here. So. Uh, <laughs> A non-commissioned work that is motivated solely by the maker's conceptual and emotional vision. It's the act of making that drives you to create. Your desire to put out into the universe with no expectations is ultimately the end result. I think that's that last part, your desire to put it out into the universe and not have any expectations of it is really important. I think a lot of times we think passion projects are going to... Um, have some kind of immediate result, <laughs> you know? Um, and I think what they have done for me over my career, both personally and as far as the studio goes, is they've just kind of added to my collective knowledge, which propels me forward. So I, I think like when you go into a passion project, for me, it's the desire to do the piece itself and not really kind of have any expectations on what it's going to do for you after. Because it will do right something. It's just probably not what you expect it will, you know? Right, right. Well, that's interesting, too, because that made me think about that idea. We've kicked around, like, you know, passion versus, say, right. alienation, right? The feeling of alienation in the sense of feeling mm -hmm. disconnected or just not inspired, not motivated, that you're just kind of maybe on a treadmill doing things, churning out work. But it's not fulfilling you in a way that is recharging or revitalizing. And that's where I think a passion project for, say, professionals becomes really important because it, it can turn that, that mirror somewhat inward a little bit. Like you talked yeah. about getting to know yourself a little more and being able to recharge and connect to those, to those feelings that, hey, I need to do something that matters. Right. When I was starting out my career, I remember meeting with somebody and I'm glad I don't remember his name because if I said it, it might be <laughs> rude. Uh, the story is because I was only at DK a couple of years and I've done a couple of really beautiful things there and I started shopping my book a little bit. I wasn't really interested in leaving, but I was just kind of looking around and I was meeting with this guy and he was a very, very senior creative director and he's, and I was talking about how you know, the work really drives me and I'm passionate about it. And every once in a while, it's nice to have one of those jobs that just kind of fills you up. And he was like, oh, if you want that, like, you have to do that on your own. That's not going to come from the work. And I was just like, that's fucking crazy. No way. And I just thought of him as like a bitter old man. And so now I understand more where he's coming from. Like, if, if you want to do work that 
drives you passionately, like sometimes you have to engineer that. You have to create that passion because if you're in a work environment and you're churning stuff out and that's not the vibe of the place, like you're gonna have to get get that going on your own. There are plenty of jobs a year through the studio that I feel very passionately about and very proud of and would say like, they give me that fulfillment you know, that some people just don't get from their work. So right. So for me, I don't feel like I have to step out of myself and do something else. But a lot of people don't have that opportunity. So doing something on your own is a chance to sharpen skills and, you know. Open new doors. Well, yeah. to bring it back, I mean, you made me remember, you brought up a memory I had early yeah. on, again, pr- where it was this sort of demoralized feeling I got after we got feedback from a client and they took this thing Mm -hmm. I was so into and it just made it what I felt was just, just bad bad decision. Right. And I remember just feeling, and and then, and I had a moment where I was just like, okay, I need to have a separate practice from commercial art. If I'm trying to get everything Mm -hmm. I need out of commercial art as a creative person from these jobs, I'm going to, I'm going to (laughs) suffer, right? Right? That's a rest. And I share this with my students a lot because it's, that's Mm -hmm. not the point, right? And yes, sometimes they align and sometimes you can get everything you need from a project, but that's not, yeah, that that, to have some, have an area, have a practice, a sketchbook, photography, whatever, you know, something you can do that a client or some external force can't come and just say, you need to change this (laughs) and that it's yours. Right. Yeah. And, and to have that, that's a really healthy way. And I think helps with sustainability for you know, long term for prof- uh, professional practice. Right. Well, I, I know that we've already started outlining what um, an episode that we're going to do just on feedback, how to process it and work with it and plan for it. And that's a big part of why <laughs> there are passion projects, because it's nice yep. to not get any fucking feedback. Yeah. Like that is, the, I think, the part um, for young designers coming into the field, especially that they don't realize is going to happen. Like they're they might be used to the critique process at school, but it's still right. a choice what they decide yes. to do and not to do <laughs> right. in in the world where when you're you know commissioned to do something for somebody, you have to address feedback, how you choose to address it how you work through it is like a whole different thing, but feedback is a daily occurrence from internal, from external, from external, external, from like, even when I was making my notes for that chat, for that episode, I was like, oh my God, sometimes you get feedback and they're like, yeah, I was watching it at home and my 10 year old thought X, Y, Z. And you're just like, so now I'm worried about what your fucking 10 year old thinks. Yeah. So that, like, once you go down that rabbit hole, which, that's why you need a passion project. Yes. <laughs> that is sometimes absolutely. why where nobody's opinions matter except for whoever you choose to show it to. That's your choice. And it's your choice whether you're going to listen to the feedback or not. Or, you know, sometimes people do passion projects with other people so that they can right. kind of mind meld with them if they like, you know, vibe with yeah, them. Yeah, no, I've been doing that recently. Just And it's been fun. Just these fun collabs where yeah. it's just you know, a friend, another creative friend, and it's like, hey, let's do a mashup, you know? Oh, that's a cool design, let me animate that. It's fun at this point, I feel like in my career, where it's like, I just feel like there's a bit, there's opportunities to, to be a phoenix and, and to kind of get fresh eyes, right? Yeah. And and to kind of shed some of the bitterness and the jadedness and all the years where it's like, yeah, 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 whatever. And to be like, oh, wow, this is fun. I'm excited to do a thing again. And, well, and that's, it reconnects you that's is to what you fell in love with about the craft of exactly. motion design. Yeah. Let's talk about why somebody would want to do a passion project like why for professionals why do they matter basically for a professional who's sort of at maybe a plateau right they've got a gig and (laughs) you're you really maybe you've reached the limit of that of that Mm -hmm. fit right and and you want to go to the next level you want to level up but you're not getting interviews right you're not getting any movement with your current portfolio what do you do right 
do a passion project, do something you're excited about, right. share that, post it, send it around to your professional network contacts, right. see if that can create some movement, create new opportunities, you know? So I think that's that's a very practical application of a passion right. project for a pro. Uh, the other side of it for me, it would be, yes, yeah, sustainability, which we've talked about, where it's yeah. just like, okay, I need to do a thing where it's just mine and it's just gonna create other possibilities. But even like, you know, I I got into doing some passion projects about a year ago with the all the Black Lives Matter protests mm-hmm. and that kind of um, just making work for in the vein of social justice and mm-hmm. what I call protest gifts. Yeah, that kind of fired something, and it wasn't something I really expected. It right. just sort of you know I saw all this stuff happening. I saw my students posting stuff. I made some things, and and it just ignited something in me that I forgot was there. Right. right? This sort Well, and it fire. resonated with people you knew because they got passed around and you got a couple gigs from it. That's right. Right. So. You know? and so, so sometimes that can, you know, passion can, and it's that idea. It's like do the kind of work you love, share that, yeah. and hopefully that will generate more opportunities for the kind of work, to get paid for the kind of work you, yeah. you want to do. Yeah. A million percent. A million percent. Yeah. yeah. What okay. do you think for professionals? So much for me, like where I'm fueled up is not necessarily being behind the computer all the time. So I like doing stuff by hand. I like actually making physical things. So there's a different kind of, you know, illustration and art and making and knitting and and making practical things. Um, Also traveling and seeing the world and being out in the fresh air. I kind of love that. So when when I shift into like a home zone, <laughs> I like to move off the computer. And what about for, for the studio? Cause that's another really important, yeah. you know, passion well, projects for a studio, why? <laughs> and maybe that's, these, yeah. and maybe that's why I don't really feel the need to do them personally because they're, I know important for me through the studio. So every couple of years we take on like a conference main title, or a no budget, low budget thing that is gonna like, just fuel us like where we could do whatever we want. And if we do have a client, they're more of like an observer. Most of that time, the time that work is completely unpaid. So we inherently can do whatever we want. Right now we're doing, um, or we just released the third book cover for Star Wars Thrawn. Now, those aren't huge money makers. Like with the amount of time we spend on them, those are passion projects. Like we want to do stuff like that that's out in the world. And, and that's interesting because that is a tangible thing, like a book cover. You know, when I've talked to various studios over the yeah. years from kind of the educator's lens of, you know, and observing mm-hmm. them and observing some of these passion projects that studios will release and, and then then talking to them and, you know, and invariably, you know, they spend far more money. They spend money making a project. So then I, I pose that to us to the class. I say, why would why would this studio spend money to make yeah. this project with this, you know, pro bono type of client, right? And and yeah. it's a good Socratic type of question to get them thinking. And and mm-hmm. then this idea, and we, you know, investments, right? There's investments in. One, like potential PR. So if you right? do something, it's a chance to flex, right? So oh the studio God. can be like, this is what, these are our capabilities. Not that different than that model of the young professional who wants to make a move somewhere right. else. It's like, let's flex. Mm-hmm. Um, potential accolades, awards, accolades, publicity. Yeah. You can't guarantee it, but that can bring in a lot more business. Yeah. Then you talked about like the, the idea of, you know, recharging, refueling mm-hmm. the, the studio, the people who work in the studio, giving them a chance to, hey, you can flex now. You can, yeah. you can get excited and really push this. And it is a creative recharge, but people do have to realize like a lot of work goes into those projects. So it's a creative recharge, but it's like a, a very- labor, A labor of love. Very physical labor of love. Like the hours are long, like, cause there's still always a deadline, you know, even, in, especially for studios and why we like conference main titles is because there is a conference, you know, (laughs) like it has to go to that. And we might have a year to make it, which is about how long people are giving us now. Um, But 
Like it's gotta get done. And the I think with any passion project, it's so easy to be passionate at the beginning, but you mm. you really have to finish them. And I and that's like a, the advice I'd give to any listener or watcher, depending on how you're consuming this, um, <laughs> is that you can't just be a good starter. Like you have to be a strong finisher. That's like writing a book. It's really exciting in the beginning. <laughs> and then, you know, there's a lot, it's a marathon. It's a now, serious marathon. Would you call Design for Motion, your book, a passion, a passion project? project? Okay. There's definitely elements of passion in it, for sure. Yeah. Um, so it, I would say yes. I would actually probably call it that. I mean, okay. obviously there's other aspects to it, but there's a lot of there's a lot of the qualities to it that were driven by passion. Right. In various kind of capacities, but I would think so. Yeah. Awesome. I wanted to talk a little bit about education too, because we had, you know, when we were first kicking this around, you you asked our are all are all student projects passion projects, you know, yeah. and that made me think about it. And and after thinking about it, I think that more often than not, I don't think they are <laughs> necessarily. Turns out, no student projects are passion <laughs> no, projects. <laughs> none, not as not, not I think sometimes one. they can be. I think sometimes they can be, but at the same time, I think there are elements of passion in student work and and if we want to unpack that a little the idea of using passion as like a breadcrumb right as a trail to entice yeah. them to learn there was this um this philosopher named um alfred north whitehead right and he had all these like 19th century british mathematician philosopher dude had all these ideas uh about education too and he talked about these three phases of education being romance precision and generalization and that there were these cycles and that in in this model the romance would really be a heavy in the passion right yeah. romance is where you're first introducing students to a topic first day of class would be hey let's look at some examples of stellar right. motion design right get them going whoa that's amazing and then and the flip side of that is even giving them a little bit of agency so it's like you know, first day of After Effects, it's like, get them in there, show them how to just move some simple shapes around and, and give them that ability to just do something and get yeah. them, ex and, and give them really low stake exercises so that they don't get a ton of pressure and worried about the outcomes. And it's just like, you know what, just play. We're gonna get into a creative sandbox. I've shown you how to use these tools. Go in and mess, or, mess around, break mess something, up. come back with some questions, have fun. If you're not right. having fun, you're doing it wrong, <laughs> right? And yeah. and that's romance. It's getting the because because the next phase is precision, and precision is what's mostly aligned with competency based learning, which mm -hmm. would be can you actually do something? And precision right. actually takes a lot of hard work to learn how to do something. And After Effects and C four D and uh, these things are complicated tools and they take time and they, yeah. some people are, are better at software than others. <laughs> some people need to work really hard to get software to stick. And if you don't True. have that romance, if you don't have those seeds of passion to motivate you to actually do the hard work and, yeah. and suffer through <laughs> the uncertainty until it clicks, if it's just day one, this is After Effects. This is a keyframe. Yeah, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. how you do the yeah. thing. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, why am I here? Why do yeah. I care? Third phase, generalization. That's the return to romance mm -hmm. or the return to passion after you have some abilities, after you have the a little confidence and you can actually make something. And that's that's where an actual passion project can start to happen. Right. Is you've got to have the skills. Competency. Yeah. Competency. Right. And yeah. and it's cool because it's kind of a cyclical thing. So I'd say on the student level, we, we definitely try to thread passion throughout. Sometimes by the end of a four year or whatever, you know, a master, whatever that is, towards that capstone senior project, thesis project, that's when I think a passion project can happen if they have the competency and they've also tapped into, you know, there's a certain kind of readiness, maturity right. maybe, or just, you know, what is it? What's their point of view on the thing, right? So it doesn't always happen, but it can. And, uh, and I don't know if it necessarily has to, right? I think mm -hmm. it's just part of the process of preparing students.
Yeah, so students can have passion projects, but it's more important that they have a passion for the what they're doing so that they see a light at the end of the tunnel of learning the competency aspect. So we talked about passion projects for professionals and for students, for studios. Um, we talked. To, did we talk about passion versus burnout? No, we, we probably should. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I mean, I, I touched on that idea of alienation, right? Burnout's yeah. another great word. You know, passion versus burnout, right? Yeah. So what's, bur you know, burnout where I'm grinding and grinding. just grinding and, and it not getting the refuel, not getting to do anything that's just mine. Even if it's, you know, and, and not to say there's anything wrong with brief driven work and, right. and commercial art because it's important. It, yeah. I get to, I get a whole bunch of needs met as a creative person, creative problem solving, get a whole bunch of financial needs met, getting paid, yeah. um, you know, but at, at, if I'm not getting that, whatever that thing is that I need that makes me feel mm -hmm. kind of motivated from a more of an emotional, visceral kind of artistic place. Right. right. Then, yeah. then the burnout, the burnout kicks in. Don't want to do it. <laughs> don't want to do it anymore. I'm just like this thing I love. I don't love it anymore. That's not right. a good feeling. It's not a not. great place to be. And so that's important then to make some time for, for little passion projects here and there. I think so. You know, yeah. that's uh, yeah. I think it's good because that can infuse the work you're doing that maybe you're not getting any passion from here and there. Exactly. Like it can be like, no, oh, I did this thing. I'm going to do that for that other thing now, you know? So that's good. I mean, like, that's also like a mindset thing, not letting it go too far. If you're like in a place where you shouldn't be for much longer and you just kind of stay, stay there. Um, for whatever reasons, I mean, you might be a little bit golden handcuffs trapped. You might, the economy might be in a downturn. <laughs> like a lot of reasons you might want to and need to stay where you are. But burnout is a real thing. And a little passion project um, might at least reconnect you as to why you got into this in the first place. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it, it's it's yeah. interesting because it's, it's hard to describe, right? You're getting in, it's, there are more feelings that, we've tried to put words to them right? and they can only go so far, right? but it, it really is. It, it's, it's an experiential thing. And, and I've had it multiple times. I've had burnout and I've had yeah. revitalization through passion and right. it's not anything like, you know, looking back, you know, you don't expect either one. <laughs> you don't know that either one of those things are necessarily coming. Right. And when you're in those places there, they can be a bit overwhelming. overwhelming. Yeah. Or o overwhelmingly awesome, where it's just like, whoa, like I have a new lens, you know, and now I'm looking at things differently. Well, I think, you know, if we're going to talk about um, passion projects, we have to talk about people that have exemplified that. People like Beeple and Pablo. Yep. How do you say Pablo's last name? Oh, Rochat. Rochat. Yeah. And even G Monk, like he. Yep is very experimental and those are people that like have really dug in to doing that as and becoming known for that and now as a result with nfts but blam like but blam. blam you know my, me. yeah so well, I, I interviewed people a couple actually yeah i interviewed people a couple a few years ago for second edition of design for motion textbook right and at that time, it was like, you know, a big part of it was, you know, the students loved his work, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone's like, people, people, you know, and, and then we're looking at the everydays. And, and it was it was really interesting because, like, his whole motivation to start that series of everydays came from just wanting to be better at what he was doing. Right. right? And he was inspired by another guy, Tom Judd, who was one of the founders of Animade. Right. Who was doing these everydays and posting these everyday drawings. So, like, you know, people spent a year doing drawings every day to try to right. just become better and posted them matter if and, and he's pretty uh blunt and self-deprecating right. right and and would just sort of call his work what it was <laughs> if it wasn't good and and just yeah and then he did a whole nother year of just photos and then another year of illustrator and then another year c4d and then at some point c4d became the thing right that right. he just wanted to do and he had been he was like a web designer in like a yeah. studio in like i forget maybe wisconsin or something and you could see it from that 
that dedication yeah. and hard work, you know, four or five, six, seven years into those C4D every day is that all of a sudden a certain amount of precision and mastery and then starts generalization to starts to kick it where, you know, by years nine, ten, I mean, it's just, you know, start to finish every day, a piece, right? A piece, and And yeah. that, you know, really that idea of just hard work, right? Hard work pays off. I mean, in this case, really paid off. I mean, it really paid <laughs> right? off, but like... Yeah. There was no expectation. That's what I mean. Like when you get into doing something, like there can't be this idea that there's going to be this giant thing on the other side of it. And it's most certainly not going to be overnight. His hit his success is a like 14, 15 year journey journey. Right. So right. you just don't know what's going to come of a passion project. But it is true. If you're feeling the push for it, you should do it. I wanna I wanted to I wanted to read this letter that Kurt okay. Vonnegut wrote. Yeah, yeah, cool. Let's do it. So I'm a big fan of Kurt Vonnegut, American author, and I came across this letter. He he um there was this high school teachers who asked these different authors if they would like give mm -hmm. some comments to inspire their students. And apparently Kurt <laughs> Vonnegut was the only one who responded. Awesome. So this is this letter he wrote. All right. Okay. This was from November fifth. 2006. That's that's what I got on the date here. All right. Dear Xavier High School, Miss Lockwood and Mrs. Perrin, McFeely, Batten, Maurer, and Conglusta. I thank you for your friendly letters. You sure know how to cheer up a really old geezer, 84 in his sunset years. I don't make public appearances anymore because I now resemble nothing so much as an iguana. Love the sense of humor. <laughs> what I had to say to you, moreover, would not take long. To wit... Practice any art, music, singing, dancing, acting, drawing, painting, sculptor, poetry, fiction, essays, reportage, no matter how well or badly. Not to get money and fame, but to experience becoming, to find out what's inside you, to make your soul grow. Seriously, I mean starting right now. Do art and do it for the rest of your lives. Draw a funny or nice picture of Miss Lockwood and give it to her. Dance home after school and sing in the shower and on and on. Make a face in your mashed potatoes. Pretend you're Count Dracula. Here's an assignment for tonight, and I hope Miss Lockwood will flunk you if you don't do it. <laughs> Write a six-line poem about anything but rhymed. No fair tennis without a net. That's fun to have the, yeah. there's the constraint. Uh, no fair tennis without a net. Make it as good as you possibly can, but don't tell anybody what you're doing. Don't show it or recite it to anybody, not even your girlfriend or parents or whatever, or Miss Lockwood, okay? Tear it up into teeny weeny pieces and discard them into widely separated trash receptacles. <laughs> you will find that you have already been gloriously rewarded for your poem. You've experienced becoming, learned a lot more about what's inside you, and you have yes. made your soul grow. God bless you all, Kurt Vonnegut. I love that. Right? I mean, that's I really, that. I mean, we could have, we could have just read that and then been like, okay, that's the episode. That's the episode. <laughs> exactly. It's pretty much said everything. Work Passion, hard. Work hard. Do it, do it to get to know you. Do it right. for yourself to get to know yourself a little better. To and grow. you will have reward, but it will, it will be, you know, for you. You know what I mean? Ah, it's so beautiful. Yep. So beautiful. Yep. Thank you, Austin, for being so intellectually intellectual <laughs> i do my i do my best <laughs> academically intellectual <laughs> awesome okay so that's it for for passion projects uh you know go make a passion project and share it keep with making us. stuff yeah cool. tag us okay. oh yeah that'll be fun yeah let's see your passion projects yeah share them and then we can critique them in a real time real talk episode <laughs> <laughs> right right <laughs> <laughs> or don't or tear them up and discard them, tear them in little pieces exactly okay goodbye all right until next time <laughs>